Today on I Talk Movies, I sit down with host, actor, writer, and producer, Michael Nardelli. Stay tuned. Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk. We talk movies. And now, here's Popcorn Talk's I Talk Movies. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Popcorn Talk's I Talk Movie. I'm sitting down with Michael Nardelli. Thank yes. you for coming in. Thank you for having me. Thanks for having me back. Of course. Yes, this is the second time you're second here. Second time. But we're talking about something else. Because yes. the last time you were here, we were talking about Circle. Circle. Yeah. Psychological yeah. thriller. That's what we were joking about. So my memorized answers from last time will not apply today. <laughs> not Got to come up with new stuff. Yes, but in the meantime, where can everyone follow you on Twitter, uh, social media? Everywhere. I've, I've put myself okay. out into the entire cyberspace world. Mm -hmm. uh, Twitter, I'm at the Nardelli. Instagram, I'm at the Nardelli. And Facebook, I, I think I'm at the Nardelli, too. So, <laughs> yeah, keep, keep kept it, it simple. simple. Yeah, yeah. And then Snapchat, I, I don't use it that much, but I'm Nards, I think. N-A-R-R-D-S, so... Great. Yeah, there you go. I'm still not on Snapchat, so you're, you're ahead of me. I'm not on there. Tumblr yet. Do I need to be on Tumblr? I'm not on Tumblr yet. And what are some of these yeah. new ones I'm getting now? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. But uh, thank you so much for coming in. And you're promoting your Christmas movie mm -hmm. on Hallmark Channel, which I personally love the Hallmark Channel and their Hallmark, uh, Hallmark home, um, Movies and Mysteries channel as well. So like I, love Jeez, it. I didn't know they I had do, that. Wow. Yeah, they have two different channels. Wow. It's nice. great. And you're promoting... Uh, Christmas and Homestead. So yes. we're going to be talking a lot about Christmas. So to just to get us started, I have a fun few questions for you. Okay. A little game. Just a little. Okay. I like games. All right. Let's go. They're really quick. All right. And I, I'm sure you'll be fine. This so is not it's not terrible. So. Well, is all it right. like pass, fail, or do I get a grade? I'm, I'm sure you'll pass okay. easily all right. for all of these. All right. What is your favorite Christmas movie? Uh, I knew this was coming. It's so hard. <laughs> There's so many of them. Uh, Christmas Vacation. I, I, I would say that just because I, yeah, yeah, I grew up on that one. I'd watch it every single year. I still watch it. But I also love the old, I love like Miracle on 34th Street mm -hmm. and It's a Wonderful Life. I like the, the more drama ones. I like them all. I like them all. But Christmas and Christmas Vacation yes. was the first one to, to pop to mind. Hands so. down, the Griswold family. Go with my yes. instincts. What is your favorite Christmas movie? Or, I mean, I just asked that. Your favorite food or dessert? Christmas food that you like to eat every year? Oh, uh, Favorite Christmas food? Uh, I, ham. I like ham. ham. Yeah, you know, a ham dinner, honey baked ham, that kind of thing. Yeah, that's that like a good. Christ, that's a Christmas thing, I <laughs> think. Some people do it in Thanksgiving, but yeah, Christmas. Yeah, absolutely. And then you said dessert too, right? Um, uh, my mom makes these things things called snowball cookies i have no idea what they're made out of what they can't possibly be good for you <laughs> they don't sound but they're good. wonderful so i'm yeah. sure they are yeah that sounds awesome uh do you have any favorite family christmas traditions that you do or friend christmas traditions yeah we're we're like a big huge holiday family my mom is a christmas advocate so the day after um halloween ends the christmas decorations go up so we have like the same childhood tree that we've had since I was a kid that has all those moving, you know, uh, yeah. electric ornaments that have like play out little scenes. Um, yeah, we, we have this tradition too, uh, enforced by my mom as well. Uh, every year we have to take a, a photo, a group photo, family photo um, on the stairway before anybody can open up their presents. And, and now I have a nephew and two oh, nieces. Like so, so the tradition continues and the family's getting bigger and the dogs are usually in the photo and everything. And it's, yeah, that's kind of our... Our annual tradition. Oh, that's sweet. So you're always with your family every year. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. Yeah. I don't. It would not fly if I didn't come home <laughs> for Christmas. I don't know. I think there'd be some upset family members. Um, so we're like a big Christmas family, and just being together is kind of kind of our annual tradition. Ah, oh, that's sweet. Yeah. All right, and yeah, then one fun. more. What does Christmas mean to you? Christmas to me means. I mean, kind of like what I just said. Really, is uh, it means family to me. You know, extended family, close family, lo loved ones. Um, mm -hmm. Just kind of being together and and knowing that, you know, most people in the world are having that day off, and it's it's a time to be with family and celebrate. So I mean, there is you know the material side to it with presents and everything, which is is fun, and you know, I definitely indulge in that, and it's it can be fun to gift and be gifted. Um, but yeah, it's it's about sort of you know. I think love and family and, and being together and um, celebrating, you know, 
your life with with loved ones for yeah. for a day and relaxing and not doing any work and hanging out and mm -hmm. having some eggnog and eating a ham you know i completely agree yeah so congratulations you passed okay Thank <laughs> yeah goodness. see that wasn't ter terrible <laughs> uh, I don't know. I was very stressed about what what my favorite food was on Christmas because there's so many. There's so you know? many, yeah. There's hot cocoa. That's true. It's not really food. I tend but... to go for the desserts because I skip all the main meals, which just sounds terrible. But yeah. like, I make all the unhealthy desserts when I get back with my family. As like, you should. The first thing I do, I make uh, uh, this really cool thing called Buckeyes. Super unhealthy. I've never heard of it. But, what is yeah, it? Yeah, it's peanut butter balls covered in chocolate. Ooh. Yeah, I but would it's love sugar that. and butter melted together and so up my alley. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. I want that. Should, All right, I'm going to make that. I'll this give year. you the recipe. Yes, please do. <laughs> yes. All right, but your movie, Christmas in Homestead, premiering on the Hallmark Channel. I'm very, yeah. very excited for this. But uh, uh, your character, you, you play Ian Cooper, who is a paparazzi. Yeah, in a paparazzo. paparazzo. I keep, yeah, that's a line in the movie, and I keep, okay. I'm, I'm like regurgitating as much as I can because we all think they're called paparazzi, but the paparazzi. singular is paparazzo. Okay. So, so know. how does your character come into play? Uh, he comes into play because the the movie's basically about a Hollywood production going to a small town to film a Christmas movie, and the, uh, there's sort of the lead of that movie. Uh, is this actress named Jessica played by Taylor, Taylor Cole. Cole. Yeah. yeah, and so I'm, I've been tracking her in L.A. trying to get, you know, the exclusive and the info, and, you mm -hmm. know, she's kind of like the Jennifer Lawrence of, of this, you know, uh -oh. fictional film. Mm -hmm. um, and so she's kind of like, you know, known for these big Hunger Games kind of movies. <laughs> and, uh, and so there's rumors that she's getting back with her ex-boyfriend, and, and he's actually going to be in the film that she's shooting in Homestead as well. So oh, I wow. followed them to Iowa. Homestead, Homestead. Uh, to to get the the photo and get the exclusive and get the story and you know dedicated dedicated totally dedicated not dedicated to the nicest things but dedicated <laughs> to his job we got to give him that right yes definitely um, like I, I like I mean every once in a while the paparazzi can get annoying but if you think about it they do keep celebrities relevant it's true in the media yeah. it's kind of like a full circle thing yeah you need you need them and they need you. I guess. They do. Right? They do. I guess everything serves its purpose, you know, mm -hmm. as long as you're following the law and, and not breaking boundaries, but I feel like that's what they normally do, so, <laughs> right. so yeah. When I read the description for this movie, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm really, really excited. Uh, I heard Homestead, Iowa, and the only thing I know about Homestead, I'm also from the Midwest. Yeah, So, me too. like, I know Homestead, and I think Ashton Kutcher. <laughs> Oh, really? Why? Yeah, because he, he grew up not far from, I think, like right outside of Homestead. Oh. But he lived in Homestead. And he didn't a make bit. a cameo in this movie? I know. Missed what the opportunity. Heck? Yeah, that could have worked perfectly. It's a movie about filming a movie Absolutely. in Iowa. Missed an opportunity. Now, you said you're also from the Midwest. Where are we at in the Midwest? I was born in Ohio. Ohio. Uh, yeah, and I also lived in Wisconsin for a little while. Uh, Racine, Wisconsin, Cleveland, Ohio. I live My in Pennsylvania. Is Pennsylvania, do we still think that's Midwest? That's getting now into Northeast, More the right? East, yeah. Yeah, northeast. okay, so we'll cross that off. But, uh, yeah, Ohio and Wisconsin, yeah. Oh, I love yeah. that. I, I'm yeah. actually from Illinois, so I'm in between. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so I that have, we... I have relatives there, so... Oh, there you yeah. go. Yeah, I love the fact that, you know, here, us two, you know, being in Los Angeles, every time we meet someone else from the Midwest, you can always point them out. Yeah. Like, you know how vegetarians can find each other? Like, yeah. Midwest people can find each other, too. So yeah, I kind of got that vibe. It's the you values. Know. Yeah, you it's can. Yeah, values. yeah, you definitely can. It's also, like, personality-wise. I think we're all kind of like-minded in that way I think so. Well. Yeah, I'm glad I grew up in, in the Midwest. You know, at the time, it was like, oh, you know, kind of wanted to know what big city life was like, but I'm really grateful, yeah, that I grew up. In the yeah. suburbs, you know? Yeah. Before Small I came out town life. here to crazy Los Angeles, you know? <laughs> yes, me too. And, then, you know, it keeps us grounded and we have strong values. I hope so. Yeah. I think I, so. I think so. I think so. Most of us. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> you do. I can't speak for I'd like to think so, yeah. but, you know, I'm working on it. But Homestead, I mean, obviously, the film wasn't filmed in Homestead. No, uh, Homestead was actually filmed in Dahlonega, Georgia, uh, oh, which is Georgia. like an, yeah, an hour, okay. an hour north of Atlanta, where my family now lives. So I actually got to see them while we were filming, which was cool. Um, but yeah, it was it was filmed in Georgia, and it was not filmed in the winter. It was not filmed during cold times. So when did you film it? Uh, October. 
October. Uh, October. Yeah. So of last year? Just recently. Yeah, oh, just finished wow. it. Yeah. Just a few weeks yeah, just ago? Just a few weeks ago. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that who crazy? Who knew? I know. Who knew they could That's do it crazy. that quick? It's the magic of, of filmmaking and the magic of Hallmark, I guess, that they're, they're able to do that. I mean, Hallmark pumps out so much content. Yeah. And I know that some of the Christmas movies that they're airing right now or just this past weekend was filmed in the summer, which was already like five months ago. Yeah. And then to now know that your film that's coming out in a week was filmed like two weeks ago. Yeah, that's just crazy. got off the plane from finishing it. Yeah. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. So it was filmed in Georgia in October. So it was, it was uh, pretty, pretty hot there while we were filming. So it was you know, mm -hmm. not always the most comfortable shoes. because we had all the heavy, like, winter layers and everything, but they put fake snow everywhere. It looked really beautiful, and I don't think you could you could tell. Oh, was... yeah. They do a great job of always making it seem like it's actually winter time. Yeah. With the decorations. How long did it take for filming? Uh, about a month. A month? About a month, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very neat. What was yeah. it like working with uh, Taylor? And, I mean, she, she she's pretty big. So yeah. Taylor Cole. Yeah, she was awesome, and, and uh, Michael Rady Michael was Rady, awesome. Yeah. Um, everybody was um, was super cool to work with, um, and and it was funny uh, for me. I don't have a lot of scenes with them because I'm usually the the paparazzo taking uh. their photos. So it's funny we'd all gather for rehearsal, and you know it's a scene that I'm in, but it was always like, okay, Michael, you stand over there by that tree or hide behind that sign over there, and you know do your paparazzo <laughs> thing. So it was. It was funny. That became like my running joke. It was like, okay, I'm going to go to rehearsal and then I'm going to walk over there. <laughs> um, but they were, she was super fun to work with. And yeah, everybody was, no divas, just good times. Everybody was fun. That's good. Kind of, I don't know, just being around all the Christmas decorations and everything. I think we were all like in the happy Christmas spirit. In the you mood. Know? Yeah. yeah, it was fun. Are there any fun stories, you know, that happened or like any fun favorite memories that happened while filming it? I think just the the constant uh, the snow was always just fun to observe because it would always there'd either be too much snow or too little and then you'd hear them on the walkies we need more snow we need more snow and sure enough then you'd see this um, you know giant pipe just shooting snow into the air or they're laying out more mounds of snow on the ground I think I don't know I think that was just probably the funniest thing to observe because there were always just people frantically running around because <laughs> you know Delonica Georgia is very green. Um, especially at this time of year. So it was uh -huh. a constant sort of battle to, you know, we'd film a take and then they'd find one patch of a bush that still had green showing <laughs> and have to go back and spray it down with fake white snow and everything. So um, that was probably the craziest thing to see. The just production. painting an entire town white with snow. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, so the the story itself, I mean, we have, you know, the girl and guy come together yes. in, in the film, uh, which is like a, a general trope of what all the Hallmark movies are. Oh, and I wouldn't like, I love and I love how there's always like a conflict uh -huh. somewhere in the movie. It's usually around like the, the midway point and then you have to figure it out. Yeah. And somehow yep. they all still somehow get back together and get resolved. Um, I, you know, I do love the Hallmark movies. I, I really can tell. Do. I can tell. So do, have you watched? any of the other Hallmark movies because they there's so many yeah I, I've movies. seen them throughout the year because um my sister-in-law really loves them and she watches them and uh I, I've definitely seen I couldn't tell you title to title all the ones that I've seen but I was definitely familiar with the brand when I mm -hmm. auditioned for it and uh, I definitely have watched them with my family and it's like nice wholesome stuff that you can watch with your family because some of the stuff I've done like in the last couple of years, I can't show to my young niece or nephew or anything like that. And, you know, and even my parents sometimes see stuff they're like, oh, they don't, you know, they're not huge fans of like violence and stuff like that. So um, I'm excited to be able to watch it with my entire extended family on Thanksgiving. Um, that's what I'm, I'm grateful to be in a Hallmark movie, especially just for that. So I can, you know, gather everybody and watch it without any controversy any or, or covering the eyes or covering kids ears or something like that you know right. it's it's so. a good feel good family movie which yeah. i think hallmark does so great that everyone can friends and family can get together and watch with no problems i mean yeah. and it's clean no pressure it's actually yeah. like clean content which yeah. is very yeah. rare to see yeah and it's good yeah. values yes yeah, great values. good small town values good about, messages about yeah. christmas and you know relationships and being honest and you know authentic and all that stuff so. absolutely so like finding nice. that christmas spirit yeah which yeah. is another thing that like uh, a lot of the the main stars they're always going to, to some location and finding themselves and finding rediscovering well that's how it yeah, happens right you leave you i mean you live in la don't you leave la yep. and discover yourself 
Refresh. I mean, yeah. Hit the reset button. Sometimes you know? we just have to drive across the state line and find ourselves and, and come back. Very, you know? very yeah. true. So you talked a little bit the audition process. How did you actually get involved with this? Uh, I just, uh, I, let's see, I was in uh, Atlanta. I, I auditioned in Atlanta okay. um, where they were casting some of the roles. Um, uh, and my family's from there, so I can, I can be a local hire in in. Georgia, which and they're filming a lot of movies there now, which is nice. Um, so I was there and auditioned, and then I was I came back here um, to finish a show I was working on, and then they wanted me to fly back to do callbacks, and then they okay. didn't want me to fly back to do callbacks. They wanted me to do a callback and send a tape in because they're just going to cast off tape, which is a thing that people do now, which can be great or it can be it can add a lot of work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it can be good because you have kind of control over your tape. Um, it can be tricky because you're not, they're not in the room kind of tweaking you or giving you sort of the the um, adjustments that they want to see for the character or whatever. But they sent me some notes and I had to retape and, and retape another role um, and then sent that in and found out like a week later I should be off to Georgia to, to film the movie. So wow. it's a pretty quick quick process and they, they cast the finals right off tape so that was kind of convenient um, and that was it. Yeah. So was this in August, September at that time? This was uh, probably was late sooner? Late September, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I think Fast process. I was one of the later roles to get cast. Yeah, I think they had had a majority cast, and then they were casting these last couple of roles, and then I think it was maybe a week between finding that out and then flying there to start up. So. That's amazing. Yeah. And quick, look at quick you quick now. Process. You're in, and yeah. now we're here talking about we're it. We're already, already talking it's about it. never happened to me. I have stuff that I've done, like... <laughs> three years ago that hasn't come out yet so oh, really? yeah yeah it's, yeah it's the magic of hallmark you know magic of hallmark and i love there's always something new like literally every week there's something yeah. to look forward to yeah it's awesome you know you're, you're never it keeps you busy bored yeah that's for sure you're never yeah. bored so i mean once you're in the hallmark family you're in because a lot of the movies and television shows, they use the same actors. Like here and there. I've heard yeah. people say that. I like, hope it's true. Over and over again. Like you, You'll find like the same ones that, I mean, Taylor Cole was just in a Hallmark know. Summer movie over like My Summer Prince. Yeah, I just heard about that. Just back in like June. Yeah. So, like, that was in June? Yeah. Oh, wow. It was like June, July. That was a summer movie. Okay. So, I mean, once they, you know, they get their actors, like a lot of times they used to they play some in other movies they too. They recycle them. Yeah. I like that. Well, but in good ways. Yeah, I hope, I hope it's true. I hope so. Because yeah, they're fun to work on. Yeah, I hope for you. Me too. I yeah, hope you so get too. more Hallmark movies. I'd love to go back into Hallmark land. It's a lot of fun. Do you keep in contact with any of the, you know, the cast? Yeah, I do. We're all, um, we're all Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram friends. So I'm keeping track of their lives and we, we talk and yeah, text back and forth and everything. Yeah, yeah. They're all great. They're all awesome. And so they're kind of all over. Some are in New York, some are LA, some are in Georgia. So mm -hmm. we'll have to have like a, a a homestead reunion at some point to watch the movie. Right, a get together. Yeah, in I'm, homestead. In homestead. Which is Delonga. So yeah. <laughs> uh, do you, uh, will you all live tweet during this? When uh, it premieres? I don't, yeah, nobody's told me if I'm supposed to do that, but I'm. I'm I'll I feel do like it. you should. Should we? Okay. Yeah. I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of the movies when they premiere, the the cast and crews, you know, and the writers even like everyone gets involved. Do in the, live is tweet. that what they do for the yeah. Hallmark movies? And Hallmark you know, goes you know crazy. Better than I would. Yeah, no, Hallmark goes crazy. Yeah, I think you should. All right. Yeah. Consider fun. it done. I'll live tweet with you. Okay, I'll do so it as long good. as you have questions. Of course. Hopefully, somebody will have questions for me. I'm okay. sure. I mean, I'm asking you all these questions because okay. I love Hallmark. Then I will do it. Consider me in. Live Excellent. tweeting November twenty fourth. Be there. Be there. Be square. I love it. So Christmas in Homestead premieres Thursday, November 24th, 8, 7 Central. Yes. Yes. Check so out So you got to finish your turkey and finish your your stuffing and your dessert and everything yeah, by, Thanksgiving. by 8. Yeah. And don't eat too much turkey because we can't have you falling asleep That's during true. the movie because it has, what does it have in it? Turkey? Tryptophan or something? I don't know because I don't eat turkey. Oh, you don't? <laughs> yeah, well, it makes you sleep. I'm terrible. It makes it you sleepy. Yeah, that's yeah, what it there's heard. something in it notoriously. It makes you sleepy. Yeah. So maybe watch the movie and then and then eat. 
There you go. You see, I, I skip the me. meals and go straight to dessert. Yeah. That's yeah, what I Yeah, there you do. go. That'll keep you awake, too. Yeah. Um, well, I will definitely be there. And other than Hallmark, you have a lot of other things that you've done, obviously, in the past. You being a writer and a producer, and you've also directed as well. Mm -hmm. um, I was just watching your uh, Dennis Isn't Here, or Doesn't oh, Live Here <laughs> anymore. But so you, you wrote and produced that. Yeah, I directed that And you that also too. starred yeah. in it. Yeah. Um, I love the concept. It was so... It, it was funny at some points and got dramatic at others and then twisted at the end. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty... And it's kind of disturbing. Pretty quirky f short it, film. Yeah. It was. Like, how yeah. did you come about in creating this short that film? That one, uh, that was uh, just a character I kind of had started creating when I was studying at Groundlings, um, you know, improv and sketch, and then always wanted to do a short film around it and always kind of wanted to, like, mix genres a little bit and do something that was you know, like a, a dark satirical mm -hmm. comedy. So yeah, that was kind of like my, my experimental <laughs> short film. And I wanted to play like a crazy role like that because I don't get to audition for that stuff and I don't get to, you know, normally do that. So he was, my... he was your character was a bit crazy. Yeah. Um, I felt for him though a little yeah, bit because yeah. like he's, he didn't seem like completely harmless. He just wanted a friend. Yeah. But other people didn't understand him. No, yeah, he just, yeah, he just, at some point in the the journey of becoming a grown-up, he kind of just, like, pushed the off button mm -hmm. on, no, pushed off on whatever button he pushed. He stopped, he stopped learning how to become an adult and, and behave in an adult way, so yeah. it's kind of like I, I feel year like old. when there's a big traumatic life event that it kind of stops whatever happens mentally, sometimes, and it's not for everybody, but it can have the ability to stop people from like moving forward. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm really into psychology and all that stuff. So I did actually did a lot of research on like post-traumatic stress disorder and which I think is probably what he suffers from oh, and, yeah. and that kind of stuff. I mean, it's it's sort of like just, you know, a quirky dark comedy. I, so I did want to get too into, you know, psychoanalysis and everything. But yeah, that's it's a true thing, you know. There's there's man childs mm -hmm. all across the world who or, you know, men and women who kind of, you know, get into the the adult world and say, oh, it's not for me. I want to be a kid again, you know. Peter Pan. And, and yeah, Peter Peter Pan complex. Peter exactly. Pan complex. Yes. Yeah. And there, there's the psych term I was looking for. <laughs> there you go. Um, I, I love there was one moment. Uh, you guys definitely need to check out the short. It's available on YouTube. It's on YouTube. Yeah. On your YouTube, yeah. which I definitely and, watch. And it's Vimeo. so good. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's actually really good. Um, visually, it looked beautiful oh, as nice. well. There Thank was a you. moment that I really loved where your character is in the clubhouse and the kids go yeah. up. <laughs> and I loved how the kids were like so much older and yeah. smarter than your character, which was just so ironic in the whole situation. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think the casting was great for this film. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, the, I've, a lot of those people I'd worked with before and a lot of them were just uh, friends that... We're able to come in and do it, so thanks, thanks for saying that. Now I'll tell them that you said that. It was, oh, it was it. a lot of work, really but it was it. it was fun. Thank you. Thanks for watching it. Uh, so you written and you wrote and did you direct that? Yeah, okay. yeah, I did. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to look in the credits, and I don't think I saw a directing credit. Oh, did we forget that I don't credits? Know. No, I, I think it's it there. Twice. I think it's just written and directed. But if it doesn't, it might have said written it doesn't. and directed. Uh oh, I, oh, go I don't know. You're probably yeah. right. Whoops. But. Oh, well. Overall, I did enjoy it, and that went to the you know short that won a few awards, didn't it? Yeah, it went to it went to a bunch of film festivals, and we won the Chicago Comedy Award and a couple other ones. Um, one in Atlanta, yeah. So it kind of it traveled across the the festival circuit for a good six to twelve months, and it was fun <laughs> to, just to see different different audiences' reactions to it because some people um, definitely got the humor of it, some people were offended by it, some people. Uh, we're just confused, so it's, you know, it was fun to do something that's not so right down the middle. It's kind of a, you know, right quirky, dark, you know. I liked the, the emotional ride I got through it, because at the beginning I was very unsure and kind of uncomfortable if that's what you were going for. Yeah. But then in the end I was like, oh, this is dark and twisted. Yeah. But this yeah. is kind of amazing. Like, yeah. now it's going to happen over again. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yes. Like, oh, yes. I feel bad that... for Mr. Wilson. Poor Mr. Wilson. Poor Mr. Wilson. I know. But poor Dennis, too. I mean, he... yeah, that's very true. He's had a rough go of it lately. Yeah. But no, I really did enjoy it. Thank like you. I appreciate, I appreciate people's short films because I myself am also a film major, and I know how much work does go into short filmmaking. Yeah, and short films are a lot of work. Especially wearing so to, many hats. Yeah, calling a lot of favors. Yeah, and and yeah, and you know you're doing. I'm 
short films i mean sometimes you can sell them or monetize them in some way but usually it's it's to make something for the art of it or or to lead to something else that you want to accomplish with that subject matter or or character or whatever so so yeah there are a lot of work and you don't you don't always see like a you know a return on them or you know so it's really for the the art of it all and the fun of it all and (laughs) the creation it's creation creativity yeah yes absolutely and you mentioned the groundlings but is that how you started the acting um, I just studied improv? with them for a long time. Uh, uh, yeah, when I graduated from college, I just studied with them and went through their whole program, and I, I definitely loved it because I didn't have a lot of training in comedy and improv, so it was definitely a, a huge learning curve for me, but I really enjoyed it. It was a great... I met so many cool people that are all now working and doing awesome things, and it definitely, if there's young actors watching or listening to this, it definitely is a good thing to... It gets you out of your shell, you know, because you really yeah. have to be present and listening to to have any kind of success when you're doing improv. Um, so it was it's good for me. It's good training. Yeah, I highly and, recommend it. I I know of a few people here um, that have gone through the Groundlings program, and I hear it's fun. Yeah, it's really amazing. fun. Yeah, it can be tough too. They're really, you know, they they definitely push you to do good work, um, and they're definitely open with with criticism when they don't think that you are so it's it's a lot of work but it, it's super fun and you meet really cool people and i mean there's worse ways to spend four hours in a classroom than just laughing the whole time so mm-hmm. do, you, do you prefer the writing or the acting or the directing more like which hat do you prefer to do or like enjoy doing the most uh i don't it changes because like with christmas and homestead i love just showing up and being an actor in that and that's always fun and then just really being able to focus on you know, the role, your role, you know, and not having to worry about all the stuff, you know, being grateful for the other producers and, and people on set and crew and everyone that's making that opportunity possible for the actor to just show up and do his work is really cool. Um, but, you know, there's definitely like ups and downs as an actor, lulls where you're not working or, time, you know, or right. times where you want to do something really different, like like the dentist short that I did. So I do enjoy, I enjoy the, the filmmaking side of it and the, the writing of it all as well. Um, and I, I, I like it's kind of I always was doing that when I was a kid always just putting shorts together with friends and writing them and acting in them and directing them so it's obviously on a different level now hopefully and hopefully it stays that way but you know it's right. kind of the same thing as what you do you do when you're young and want to make little movies with your friends um friends and family friends and family yeah well, you, yeah you own a production company yeah with your my brother, brother and I, yep both my brothers yep Oh, yeah. both of you. So yeah. this is a family affair. It's a family endeavor, yeah, for better or worse. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that you're stuck. Yeah, um, they're stuck with me. Do, do they write and produce and all of that? Yeah, or yeah. Are they actors as well? Yeah, they're they're kind of involved in all of it. My uh, One of my brothers is uh, also a comic book artist, so he does a lot of, like, you know, like the poster for Dennis and the poster for our film Circle. He does a lot of, like, the, the graphic art and design. Um, and my other brother, yeah, is also a writer and director and producer. And so they all, we all kind of contribute and help develop stories and everything with each other and and read each other's ideas or scripts and everything and uh yeah it's fun to work with your family because you know who can you trust you right. know like other than your your family especially in you know a big city like this it's it's nice to have that yeah and i can imagine that could be very advantageous because you know the people who you're working with but is that some does that hinder sometimes you know working so close to people that you know as such as your family has that ever been an issue? Uh, sometimes. Only, only, uh, yeah, when you have, like, because, uh, you know, with any family member, you have a lifetime of mm-hmm. memories and experiences, <laughs> right. and you know each other's triggers, and you know, you know, you, it's just sometimes they're not, and not even sibling rivalry, but yeah, there's just, um, you know, there's a quickness and an efficiency to working with family, and then there's also, like, you know, if you get into an argument or a spat or something, it's, you know, it's different than with, uh, like, a, a co-worker that you've just met. You bring that, all that baggage that you have from your whole life, and I'm like, well, this is how it always is with you. You were just like this when we were young, and, you know, <laughs> right. that kind of stuff. But then you resolve it quickly, too, with, with family, because you, you have to. You have no <laughs> we choice. still got to get this We're going done. home for Christmas. We all got to get along. Yeah, yeah. Um, I imagine that was fun. None of my family is out here, so like I don't know what that's like, but I, I can imagine that's fun. It's good working yeah. with you know a big project with people that you love. Yeah, and yeah. Working on something that you love. Yeah, that's it's really nice. Cool. I'm I'm grateful for it. Yeah. So the last time you were here, you were promoting Circle. Circle. Which was a psychological dark thriller. Yes. Someone could die at any moment. Very different from 
Very different. Christmas in Homestead. <laughs> do, which genre do you prefer? Dark thrillers, you know, or comedy, or a he heck, even romance like Hallmark? Yeah. Is there one that you gravitate towards more? Yeah, I'm drawn to dark, to darker, like, I like genre stuff. Darker, I am drawn to that. But that's why it was really nice to do Christmas in Homestead, because uh, it was a nice break from that. Breather. Um, yeah, a nice breather, because I've done some heavy things, heavy you know, film and TV stuff in the last couple of years. Um, so it was nice to just play this character who had this, this arc who is, it, yeah, it was an arc about him becoming a better person. I don't think that's a spoiler. That's <laughs> right. what usually happens in Christmas movies. Um, so that was, it was nice. And, you know, I, it was nice. I always try to do a lot of research before I do anything. So I would, you know, I, I this is the first romantic comedy I've ever done. So I watched romantic comedies I hadn't seen before. Oh, and which I watched, ones? Well, and not all of them, not all of them were, um, were like I, I saw me before you okay that one that just came out i watched um working girl because i had never seen that but that's supposedly one of like the best romantic comedies ever do you agree uh, yes. um yes. i rewatched like pretty woman and four weddings and a funeral these are all most of the classics. movies yeah i try well i try to hit the classics um because you can't beat the classics True. but i did try to like yeah get a better understanding of like oh why do people like romantic comedies and all that stuff because i don't watch a, i don't watch a, a lot of them to be honest but i really enjoyed it's it okay. i really i really in, enjoyed them and it was a nice breather from from doing you know more serious drama so you have a better heavy. understanding of I the do, i do romantic. and i and i like it it's nice yeah. i'm turning a new leaf there you go i'm turning a new leaf i want to mm -hmm. only do nice romantic comedies from here on out well, keep in touch with Hallmark, and they're like, we got you. With Christmas trees in them, too. With Christmas. That always helps. Christmas cookies, yeah. I imagine, too. And cookies. They did have cookies. Did yeah. they have cookies? They had cookies. There was hot cocoa. There was hot cider at times. Everything. Yeah, everything you could, could ever want or imagine. Oh, that's awesome. Next time you have to come visit. I, uh, I would love to. Yeah. Totally. Uh, and so getting a little back to the darkness. The darkness. You're, you're also producing Dark Web? Yeah. Which so, is, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it's a digital series that we've made uh, with my brother through our production company and uh, with um, Mario Michone who worked, uh, who did Circle with us. So it's a lot of the same Circle peeps getting back together to do something new. Um, <laughs> and it's a, yeah, it's a, it's an eight part um, anthology show that deals with all this stuff, Techno all this technology, technology and, and uh, the dangers of it and the positives of it and... Um, and uh, how we rely on it and how we shouldn't rely on it. And it's basically different episodes, different stories about sort of the dangers of our interconnected world. And a lot of it's pretty topical um, as it applies to things you see on the news, like, you know, cyber terror and freedom of information and hackers, which have been all over the news in the last uh, month yes, a lot. So, so we're seeing how, how much of a role they're playing in our future. Snowden. Um, yeah, and there's some, and there's, what'd you say? Snowden. Snowden, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, uh, and yeah, there's just a lot of the stories are, I don't know if you know anything about the dark, dark web or the deep web, but it's a real thing. Not really. It's not accessible through it's... your average browser. You have to have a special browser and yeah, all these steps to get into it. Um, but there's a lot of uh, nefarious activity happening on there, and we've pulled some of the, some real life stories that are happening on there into the show. So, um, yeah, it should be topical and scary and exciting and and fun and the cast is cool and, yeah. and it's, it's, yeah, it's It fun. sounds fascinating and very relevant too yeah. in, in today's society, especially we're so hindered on technology and social media and how that affects people's personalities and just their social yeah. profiles and like who we are as people. Some people are only defined by their online presence. Yeah. We have like, stories about that. Yeah, oh, that's do you? Yeah, oh, yeah. Do you touch yes, upon you like the YouTube celebrities and all yep. that? Yep, yep, okay. all that, yeah. Yeah, sort of the dangers of Insta-fame is one of the episodes, you know, storyline in one of the episodes um, that gets explored and uh, and a lot more. A lot more. Oh. A lot more. Intriguing. Yeah. I would definitely watch that. You would? Good. Yeah, Please absolutely. Do. Please do. Where, where, when and where is it available? So we're still actually, fil we start up filming a couple more episodes uh, on Wednesday okay. of this week, so Fierce. all of that is still to be to be determined. But we're okay. uh, we're working with this website LRM Online, and they're promoting the show, and we'll probably debut some material on that website. Um, and they're doing kind of a weekly uh, 
uh, not progress, a weekly sort of a column about the production and sort of to educate the readers about. And this is how you make a series, a digital series. And um, there was a contest allowing readers to submit scripts as well for it and we picked one to be an episode that we're going to film so oh, that's so neat. yeah trying to interact with, with the readers yeah very interactive and you also directed an episode yeah i believe yep yep so what's your episode about if you can say anything uh my episode is called viral and it deals with the viral nature of ideas uh and it it's sort of the the parable or the the theme behind it is just um the the, the power of suggestion now that we're all um, exposed yeah. on the internet and people don't have to necessarily fact check things anymore and um, trends are we have trend setters out there and trend uh, creators and everything and, and people follow them you know what they say and what they do so it's sort of the uh, something gets exposed online and it's sort of the consequences of somebody really believing that and taking it to heart even though it's not necessarily true uh. and that's my <laughs> that's my spoiler free synopsis I think no, that's hopefully it wasn't too that vague. Was, that was enough of a tease. <laughs> yeah, that, okay, that good. It, um, wants people to watch definitely. You know, sound. You know, hearing what you just said about the show, it kind of sounds like uh, Black Mirror. Yeah, it's similar. People say that. Yeah, people said Circle was similar to Black Mirror too, and it is. Okay. It's a, uh, it go. It's a little more horror oriented i would say i guess i could say that uh than black mirror there's definitely similarities but there's also a lot of differences okay. that when you yep. watch it so um but that's a compliment i take that as a compliment because yeah. i love i love black mirror it's great okay yeah i i have to start watching black mirror but everyone's telling me i would love it um which i know i probably would yeah um, our, i just need to devote time to to watch it yeah it's our modern day twilight zone you gotta that's what everyone says watch it. yeah yeah so dark web which it's a web series it's a right? we're calling it a digital Different series digital series you know okay. what that means yes. you work in the digital world Absolutely. i don't know what it means somebody Absolutely. knows what it means and they said that's what it is no it's not a, yeah no. yeah great so, so digital digital series. digital yeah. digital were there any like different regulations filming a digital quote-unquote series compared to like if you were part of a network filming this were there anything different the differences that you can get away with while uh, filming? I, in terms of like content or content or, or like I I know some networks are you know they flag nudity they flag censor they censor you know um, language and stuff where where there are things that you could probably get away with more yeah than this yeah I mean we didn't yeah we don't follow any of the rules about yeah lang I mean it's uh it's not overly gratuitous in in language or violence or sexuality or any of that stuff okay. but it's definitely. We didn't have any censorship or limitations from anyone. It's we kind of, I mean, have approached, and it's been a learning lesson filming the digital series the same way we filmed Circle, which is you know as tight knit of a crew and actors as we can, and spending as little as we can, and um, and doing it that way. And um, and it's been a little different doing it as a series versus a feature, but it's it's been interesting. And um, and yeah, it's definitely I, it's definitely an edgier show that would fit more on like. Netflix or Hulu or then okay. then like ABC Family or something, or something <laughs> right. like that. Yeah, it's it's a little darker and edgier than that. Nice. Well, I'll definitely be tuning into that. Cool. When Thank that you. finally releases, it. Thank I'll you. be tuning into everything you do. Thank you. So that'll be fun. Let me know what you think. Of, yeah, of course. And I'll be tuning into you too. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course. Um, are there any other big projects that you're working on right now? Uh, I have a film uh, that I'm proud of called The Tribe coming out next year. I don't have the exact date, but it just premiered at the Savannah, uh, Savannah Film Festival. Um, okay. And it's playing at uh, Other Worlds in Austin next month. Uh, and then it'll come out um, theatrically and BOD and all that stuff next year, I think in the spring. Um, and Roxy, she directed that, who also directed a bunch of the dark web episodes. Okay. So um, yeah, it's it's um, it's another dark. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's why it was like then... nice to do Christmas in Homestead. But um, yeah, it's sort of a at the end of the world drama, kind of like The Road. I don't know if you've seen that yeah. about these three three sisters. It's a, it's very much from female point of view though. So I think that's what makes it fresh. Um, it's these three sisters um, who live on this farm at, at the end of the world. You know things have happened um and the, the population is gone and they kind of fend for themselves and they're they were you know raised by this protectionist father who said you know don't let anybody in and take care of yourselves and they're self-sufficient they have a garden and a water supply and then they let someone in oh, and that no. someone is me <gasps> oh so your I, character stirs everything yeah Ooh. yeah he's kind of an instigator 
oh. without spoiling anything. <laughs> but just the way you said it. But a well-intentioned, <laughs> a well-intentioned instigator. A well-intentioned. Mm, I find that hard to believe now. No, he really? means he means well. Okay. Everyone means well. All right, I believe don't you. Don't they? <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's coming out, and then uh, and then just just finishing up our episodes of Dark Web, which will probably go through January and then assembling all those and yeah ah, that, that, that's that'll fun. take up some time that'll that'll get me through the new year well I I do love dark psychological thrillers so believe it or not I may love Hallmark but on the flip side I do love dark, dark psychological okay thrillers. well then you'll like you'll so, like, like the it's so too. up my alley yeah now Hallmark needs to do a dark psychological thriller no, no 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 that that would no. just feel awkward yeah. if they did it yeah that's true <laughs> I was, no. I'm not sure I would like that um, so with all this success that you've had, you know, doing these films and writing and producing and directing, where would you like to s see yourself in like 10 years from now? Like, what would you like to be doing? More movies? Ooh, uh, I just like, I like to keep working. Uh, mostly I, I'm not a fan of not working. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, I mean, I'd love to be on, I, I watch a lot of the new shows that, are out there i'd love to be on um i'm really into westworld right now I, I, you know something that's like really that that's really good i'm i'll i'll never stop mourning the fact that i never got to be like a guest star or something on like mad men that was one of my oh. favorite shows um battlestar galactica i loved <laughs> that one uh but uh, yeah and then i'd love to do more comedy stuff too like dennis was sort of a thing I'm, you know and mm -hmm. and christmas in homestead is definitely more comedic than some of the other stuff that i've done um yeah, so I, 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 there's a lot of great comedy out there right now, too. So, I, yeah, I mostly just love to keep working and, and be able to, um, on the filmmaking side, create stuff with my friends that, that finds its audience, you know, like the way Circle did, and hopefully hopefully Dark Web will have the same path. So Yeah, oh, that's great. Keep on, keep on keeping on, you yeah. know? Are there any, like, directors or writers that you would love to collaborate with? With? There, uh, there's so many, uh, like Christopher Nolan. I'm a mm -hmm. huge Joss Whedon fan. Same. Joss Whedon addict. Um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah, all yeah, the way. we all love that. There's yeah. a couple people in this room that love <laughs> that love that. And yes. Side note: Nicholas Brendan is in Dark Web. Really? Later, well, and, then and I definitely have to watch yeah, it. Yeah, and Clara Kramer Xander. played Glory. She's on Dark Web too. So, well, so shoot. yeah, we, we're trying to recruit all the Buffy vets that we can. As you should. Um, yeah, but uh, um, yeah, and I, I mean, there's so many directors like Tarantino and I, 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 every every director. I want to work with every single director, every single director. Well, I hope that works now. for you. Will it? I don't think that can happen, but I'll try. Oh, now you gotta be positive. It's like I will put yeah. that out into I the will. world. I will. I will. Work. Darn it. Yes, um, I'm definitely watching Dark Web when that happens. Thank you. Um, also, we now knowing that the Buffy people are involved, so of course I'm there. Uh, but thank you so much for coming in. Of course, thanks for thanks for having me and, and watching the short and yes and, and yeah and please watch uh, Christmas in Homestead and I hope you enjoy it. So, uh, you're the biggest critic of these movies, so your I mean, opinion will yeah. matter. I'm not so much a critic. I just love these movies. Okay. Because, well. Yeah. No, I hope they're, you they're love so this feel I think good. you will. Yeah, I'm sure I will. I will definitely be watching Thursday, November 24th at 8, 7 Central. Once again, can you tell everyone where they can follow you, your social media platforms? You can follow me on Twitter, at The Nardelli. You can follow me Instagram, at The Nardelli. You can follow me Facebook, at The Nardelli. And then the Snapchat one, Nards. But, but there's not <laughs> a lot of activity there. I haven't, I haven't quite figured it out yet. Okay. Maybe someday. Maybe someday. Yeah. And you can follow me at Serafini TV because I do talk a lot of television other than movies as well. You can follow all of us here at The Popcorn Talk on iTunes, YouTube, all those fun places of social media because we are all there just like the dark web. Everywhere. Oh, <laughs> thanks again spooky. so much for coming in. And Thank thanks for everyone for tuning in. Definitely check out Hallmark and Christmas in Homestead. And we will see you next time. From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit PopcornTalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. Thanks thank for watching. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.